Hey guys, this is Woodshop Junkies, and in today's video, I'm going to make a storage and display case for Hot Wheel collectibles. Right guys, so as many of you know, last year I became a dad and in my son's birth month I very impulsively started collecting mainline Hot Wheels. I figured when he's old enough I'll give him the collection and it might be a fun thing to hunt for cars together. Oh, that's the idea. I mean, that's assuming he likes collecting toy cars or likes cars for that matter. If he doesn't, I guess I get to keep the collection so it's a win-win for me. Either way, at the moment, the small but growing carded collection is stored on improvised racks in his room. But when he gets older, I am almost 100% certain it's going to be impossible to stop a toddler or a young boy from wanting to open all the blister packs and play with the car inside. That's why in this video I'm going to build a decorative display for his bedroom that can be used to store uncarded cars. You know, ones he can play with. Will it stop him from wanting to open the blister packs and play with the carded cars? Probably not, but it's worth a try. The unit I'm building today will serve as a storage and display unit for up to 64 uncarded Hot Wheels in individual compartments to keep the collection organized. Now the number 64 is not etched in stone and the design can be very easily adapted to accommodate more or less cars by adding and removing rows or columns. To produce the individual compartments that are going to be arranged in a grid form, I ripped up 6mm or quarter inch plywood which will form the vertical and the horizontal partitions. To mesh together the verticals and the horizontals in grid form, I'm going to cut joints into the edges of the boards using my miter saw. And to ensure that the joint spacing on the verticals and horizontals respectively are exactly the same, I tape them together before cutting the joints. Now this is really the trickiest part of this fun weekend build and once I'm through this part the rest is pretty much smooth sailing. If at the end of this video you guys are looking for some plans or exact dimensions for this project I will be posting very detailed plans to my plans website and I will put the link in the description of this video where you guys can check it out. To cut these I guess you can call them lap joints, I'm relying heavily on the depth stop of my miter saw, firstly to make sure that I cut them all at the same depth and secondly to make sure I cut them at half of the width of the plank so that when the verticals and horizontals are meshed together they will accommodate the same width. With that the partitions and pretty much the hardest part of this project is prepped and ready to be assembled. Now the basic storage unit consists out of three main components of which the partition section is one. The other two components is the frame and the backing. Next I'm going to assemble the frame. I went with the three components assembly to simplify the project. All three components can be fully prepared or even painted to suit whatever color scheme is required before assembly. Right, so the frame really is just to keep everything together. I'm going to paint it to suit the room and then place all the partitions inside the frame and fix the backing behind it to complete the project. Now at the front of the frame I'm going to add a small trim piece to act as a retainer.
Now guys, generally when I have to paint wood, I use this Rust-Oleum spray paint. I'm not sponsored by these guys, I buy it myself, but it's a really cool product. It doesn't require primer and it covers pretty well. Right, so that's pretty much it for the frame. It's assembled and painted, nothing too complicated. Next, I'm going to do the backing. And for the backing, I'm using a very thin piece of white MDF. And the reason I'm going with the white is to allow the bright colors of the cars to stand out once they are placed in the unit. And the cool thing about it is if you want to add a logo, you can put a, like a vinyl sticker or something onto the backing before assembling the project. And to stiffen up the backing, I'm going to glue pine slats to it. This is, as I said, to stiffen up the backing and also to give me something to screw into when I am assembling the project or fixing the backing in place. Right guys, so that's the three main components of this project prepped and ready to be assembled. That's the frame, the backing and the partitions. And as you can see, everything was fairly straightforward. The partitions may have been a little bit more tricky, but nothing too crazy. And if I measured everything correctly, everything should pop in place now and it will take a couple of screws or nails to keep the assembly together. Now I'm using pine plywood for the partitions because I kind of like the look of the engineered wood with the painted pine and the white backing. But it's not everybody's cup of tea. An alternative could be painted MDF to suit either the frame or the backing. The beauty of this design is the fact that the partitions are never really fixed together or fixed to anything else. Together, the frame and the backing, when assembled, keep the partitions together. So at this point, I really just pop everything in place and fix the backing to the frame and the project is ready to go. Now I probably should have used a cleat to fix this unit to the wall but I for some reason decided to put two screws from the front and I'm going to cover up these screws with plastic caps. Okay guys, so that's pretty much it for the basic unit and as I said at this stage it's more decorative than functional because my son's a bit young for Hot Wheels. When he gets a bit older and he's interested in it or he wants to play with it, I'll drop the unit down to his level so he can put the cars in and take them out himself. Now. Because it's more decorative at this stage, I'm going to add something a bit extra to make it more suited or themed for a little boy's room. I'm going to add a truck that will make the unit look like it's a trailer transporting well, Hot Wheels. And for the truck I'm going with a layering technique that will allow me to paint the layers different colors.
Now normally I am all about detail but this project is for a child's room so I am focusing on big bulky shapes and distinguishable colors. Alright guys, so that's pretty much the project and I think it turned out really nicely. The component form assembly or even the layering technique with a truck really simplifies the manufacturing process and it allows you to paint the different components to suit whatever room the unit is going to be placed in.
Right, and that's pretty much it for this project. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's a little bit of a break from the normal for my channel, but it was a fun weekend project and I think it turned out quite nicely. Hopefully my kid enjoys it when he's a year or two older as well. Then, as I said, I will be posting plans on my plans website for this project. So if you want exact dimensions, you can check out the link in the description down below. Then if you have anything you want to add, put it in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Do you think I should do more projects like this or should I stick to my shop orientated type projects? Let me know. Then guys, I'll be back really soon with some more videos. I'm currently working on a fence for the AGS-10 that a very generous gentleman sent over and I'm working on an upgraded version of my spray paint and chemical storage and organizer unit because I've got way too much all over the shop and it's getting out of hand. So if you aren't subscribed yet and you wanna see those videos, you should do that now. And that is pretty much that. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will be back really soon, but for now, cheers.